It's All Souls Day, and two great armies are preparing for bloody battle. It's King Richard's Royal Army versus Richmond's Legion of French soldiers and English rebels. Richard will have to fight to keep his stolen crown. Who will emerge victorious? All Souls Day is a Christian day of prayer for departed loved ones, especially the souls caught in purgatory. Traditionally, there were no executions on All Souls Day because it was a day for religious devotion, but not for the Duke of Buckingham. His head is coming off regardless. As he is led to his death, Buckingham deeply regrets helping Richard become king. He calls on the souls of Richard's innocent victims and commands them to witness his execution as part of their revenge. Buckingham knows he's getting what he deserves and remembers old Margaret's warning to him. If only he'd listened to the angry old witch. In another part of the country, Richmond meets with his allies. He has marched through to the middle of England without any opposition. So it seems that Richard has few friends left, except those who are too scared to defy him. Richmond encourages his troops to march on towards Richard's army and fight for everlasting peace in England. Hey team, just a reminder, if you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. It really helps the channel out and our next upload could be on something taught in your next class. Thanks and back to the video. Only a short distance away, Richard's army is setting up camp in Bosworth Field. With triple the number of soldiers compared to Richmond, Richard is feeling confident. He gathers his allies around him to discuss their plan of attack. Meanwhile, Richmond observes the golden sunset from his camp. He takes it as a good omen for the following day's battle. Even though Richmond has a smaller army, he'll make the most of it with a careful battle plan. He knows that his stepfather, Lord Stanley, isn't far away, but needs to appear loyal to Richard. Richmond sends a message to Lord Stanley before inviting his noble allies into his tent to discuss tomorrow's strategy. Will Stanley rebel against Richard and risk the life of his son, George? Remember, Richard has George under guard as an insurance policy against Stanley's rebellion. Poor George could lose his head if his father openly defects to Richmond's side. Back over in Richard's tent, Richard sends orders for Stanley to bring his troops over before sunrise. If he doesn't, it's off with George's head. Richard seems extra grumpy and tense. He orders his minions to make sure his armour, horse and weapons are ready. He also repeatedly asks for wine to be brought and complains about feeling dull. Time for bed, Richard. The mood is quite different in Richmond's tent. Lord Stanley has snuck over to wish his stepson all the best for tomorrow. Stanley can't help Richmond as much as he'd like to, but he'll do what he can without seeming obvious and risking George's life. When Richmond is alone, he prays for God to be on his side tomorrow. And here's where things get interesting. Both Richmond and Richard are visited by a series of ghosts. They are the restless souls of Richard's victims. Prince Edward, son of King Henry, then King Henry himself, followed by Clarence, Rivers, Grey, Vaughan, the two young princes, Lord Hastings, Lady Anne, and the Duke of Buckingham. Each spirit curses Richard to despair and die, and blesses Richmond to live and flourish. After receiving these dark tidings, Richard wakes in terror. He doesn't know whether to hate himself or love himself for the things he's done. He becomes frightened about the outcome of the battle and paranoid about deserters. Meanwhile, Richmond wakes up feeling fresh as a daisy. 
He's invigorated by the ghostly messages and ready for a triumphant battle. He goes out to speak to his troops and assures them that God is on their side. In his epic pre-battle pep talk, Richmond promises the soldiers peace, wealth and happy families if they help him kill the tyrant Richard. To Richmond and victory! Over in Richard's camp, Richard notices that the sun hasn't risen. This will be a black day for someone. But who? We're about to find out because Richmond's troops are assembling on the battlefield. Richard gives his final orders for his army's formation and addresses the troops. Unlike Richmond's uplifting speech, Richard's is hateful, violent and bloody. Since Richmond's army has a large French contingent, Richard spews out racist remarks about the foreigners. He relies on his soldiers' prejudice and spite to win the battle for him. When the drums sound, Richard orders his army to march on and fight hard. At the last minute, Richard receives the message that Stanley has defected to Richmond. Richard calls for George's head to be cut off. But the grisly execution will have to wait because they're about to face Richmond's forces. In the heat of battle, Richard's beautiful white horse is killed, so he fights on foot. He's a fearsome warrior despite his deformities and eagerly seeks out Richmond on the battlefield. If only he could have a horse, he'd give his kingdom for a horse. Then, finally, Richard and Richmond meet for an epic medieval sword fight. Trumpets blast and drums beat as the two adversaries clash. It's good versus evil, righteousness versus tyranny. Richard is slain. It's victory for Richmond and justice for Richard's victims. Lord Stanley offers Richmond the crown, which he accepts graciously. And good news? Stanley's son George is still alive. Hooray! Richmond orders for Richard's dead nobleman to be respectfully buried and his soldiers to be pardoned if they submit to Richmond's rule. And just like that, the Wars of the Roses end. Richmond marries Elizabeth of York, the House of Tudor is established and peace reigns in England. Well, at least until the drama of Henry VIII and the next war with France and the Cornish Rebellion and so on. Is peace an illusion or is it just the absence of brutal tyranny? Either way, if Richard III was as awful as Shakespeare would have us believe, it's probably a good thing his reign was cut short. We hope you enjoyed this Schooling Online production. For more easy lessons, check out our other videos.